Good morning and welcome back to another edition of Gary's Movie Aporium. Today is another Dollar Tree Movie Haul, Part 2, from Larry and Melissa. Uh, it's about 29 titles this morning, so there's equally about as many Blu-ray as there is DVD. Um, I'm going to start off with the DVD first. Uh, first up in this uh, video this morning, and also happy uh, Thursday as well to all my viewers and friends out there. Uh, first up is Millionaire Dog. Kind of has that vibe to a little bit, like Home Alone a little bit, with the two villains chasing down the main title dog here. In this case, it's not Kevin uh, McAllister. <laughs> In this case, it's a little uh, pint-sized dog. I'm not sure what is. Oh, Poncho. Apparently, he's a J Jack Russell Terrier. Comes to learn that being rich isn't all fun and games when a crooked... Businessman uh, sends his two henchmen to dognap the pooch and steal his newfound fortune. Uh, it's from SP Releasing. 94 minutes on this one. Anamorphic widescreen. And uh, its aspect, aspect ratio is 235 by 1. Looks pretty interesting. Might be really bad, but looks interesting nonetheless. Let's look at the back. And next up, I got uh, Pound Puppies, Super Secret Pup Club. So, so far, this video this morning has uh, in, uh, been in the theme of uh, puppy dogs. Uh, first up, or uh, next up here is Pound Puppies, like I said. Uh, Shout Kids. Two, it ran from 2011 to 2012. It does come in 5.1 and 2.0. Uh, if I didn't mention, it's a Shout Factory, uh, Shout Kids. And it does have a total running time of two hours, so you're getting a lot of uh, bark for your buck, if you will. Uh, comes with episodes Bon Voyage, Maternal Instincts, The the Fraud Princess, Super Secret Pup Club, and a Rough Rough, rough uh, Bunch. It says, don't miss this puptastic fun. There's quite a few in this last wave uh, from a couple months back. And that's uh, Pound Puppies. And then next up, I got Season 1, Volume 2 of this because I wasn't sure. I've seen this many times. It's I think there's three seasons of this uh, show. This particular, uh, this, I think this has 13 episodes as well. Yeah, Season 1, Volume 2. Um... It's from Flatiron Films and Cinetime. Uh, two disc, approximately f almost five hours on this one. Uh, and you can go to CinetimeEntertainment.com as well to find out more about their uh, vast library. Um, let's see. Yeah, they, they have about equally the same amount of uh, episodes on both, both discs. But end of the day season one volume two has 13 episodes let's look at the back kind of unique animation there a little bit like invader zim a little bit from uh nickelodeon if you will that's the that's the vibe i get from it and then i got a dragon dynasty one big ransom one small problem uh jackie chan and rob robin b hood Comes with a slip as well. Uh, DragonDynasty.com, uh, they have a link at that particular uh, link. I don't know if that's a workable link. It might not be at this point because this is probably an older title. Um, 126 minutes on this one and has 5.1 sound. And it's from 2006 in... Uh, was presented, uh, the um, distributed by Vivendi in two thousand nine. So I got some Jackie Chan uh, in the collection now too. I think I might have had this in another video, but I wasn't sure at the time. But uh, this one comes with a slip. I'm not sure if the other one did. I think it might have been just bare bones. And then I got an O.J. Simpson, Fred Williamson. A nine action movie set here from Echo Bridge. Um, 
has such movies as the Jackie Robinson story, Mean, mean uh, Johnny Barrows, The Glove, Black Fist, The Klansman, uh, Deadly Drifter, De Delta Force Commando, The Baron, and Stigma. Uh, Fred Williamson plays in Mean Johnny Barrows. John Saxon plays in The Glove. Um, you got a Dabney Coleman in Black Fist as well. Um, O.J. Simpson in The Klansman. Danny Glover and Peter Coyote in Deadly Drifter. And Fred Williamson in Delta Force Commando. That's pretty much... Pretty much a Fred, more like a Fred Williamson collection than an O.J. Simpson one, from what I'm seeing. Not too surprising, seeing uh, Fred Williamson was really popular in the 70s with uh, his action actionploitation kind of genre he always did. Kind of very much like in a grindhouse fashion, he ended up... Fred Williamson was also in the movie From Dust Till Dawn. He was a guy that was always smoking a stogie in it. And, well, going to smoke one after he, you know, kill a zombie. That's Fred Williamson. That's probably what you guys would know him best from. But there's a look at the back. You get nine titles. So, no complaints there. And then I got tad into my stand-up uh, comedy section of the library. I got Pablo Francisco. They put it out there. Uh, Levity, I uh, guess, pictures. I'm not sure. It might be distribution. I'm not sure. Uh, 76 minutes, 2.0. It has a aspect ratio of 178 by 1, or AKA 16 by 9. Bonus features, infomercial, photo shoot, uh, outtake powder, and Scandinavian sunglasses. And it does have a fans bonus feature as well. Um... It's from 2011, and you can go to the pablofrancisco.com. Uh, warning, though, this movie does have explicit language, so this is something that you don't want kids to even remotely hear. You might want to send them to bed, or you know, or if you happen to have a kid in the house, maybe wait till later, just because of the profanity. Not that today's kids don't hear a lot of profanity, but <laughs> not ideal, though. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of Pablo, to be honest, but I thought it'd go good in the comedy section of the of, of the Emporium Library. So, happy to pick that up from Larry and Melissa. I grabbed it. No one else really wanted it. And I picked this up from them because I'm a big Superman fan, or a Wonder Woman and Superman fan here. Uh, based on the Incredible True Story, Luke Evans, Rebecca Hall, Bella Heathcote. Uh, and Annie, or Connie Britton, I don't know where I got Annie from, uh, but uh, written and directed by Angela Robinson, Professor Marston, and the Wonder Wonder Women. Uh, this movie is uh, classified as certified fresh by Rotten Tomatoes. Uncover the origin of an icon. So, basically, it's the uncovering of, uh, you know, the backdrop, uh, the backstory of how Wonder Woman came came to fruition. Uh, it has special features, a dynamic trio, a crucial point of view, directing Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman. It's rated R. Sony Pictures in, conduction, uh, in per conjunction with Stage 6. And I can't see that too good. I think this is Anna something. Anna Puna? Maybe? I don't know. I can't really see it too well. Uh, it's 239 by 1, 5.1, 108 minutes on this. Widescreen presented, or anamorphic widescreen, if you will. Uh, we will never look at Wonder Woman the same way again, says Peter Travers of Rolling Stone. So, it does have Rebecca Hall from The Gift, uh, and and uh, Bella Heathcote, like I said. Does have Luke Evans from Beauty and the Beast in it as well. Uh, some pretty interesting, you know, theme here going on. You know, like with, what you know, the backstory of this uh, popular uh, DC character. To, you know, come out of the ashes to be, you know, 
presented to where we can, you know, see her on our, our you know, uh, Hollywood uh, screen, you know, so we can see what she's up to, you know, like how to get her into the limelight and how she came about. It's pretty interesting to know that kind of thing. But, uh, that's uh, Prof Professor Marston and, and uh, the Wonder, Wonder Women. And then I got uh, the first one in the Pusher uh, series. I got Pusher, Nicholas Windings, Ruffins, uh, Pusher from Magnolia. 110 minutes from 1996. Um, 185 by 1. Full screen presented on this one. Sorry about the glare, but this cover is kind of not giving it much justice because. Like many, you turn it that way, the white starts to glare. <laughs> See, I like the whole thing. The bad thing about a white cover. Sometimes that's what's bad about, like, anything bright, too. You know, you turn it to the angle, and then it gets hard to see. It's a magpictures.com. Um, not rated. 110 minutes, 2.0. It'll be digital. Uh, the problem with this, though, is it's not in English. Um, you you can watch it with English subtitles uh, from 1996, and it's 110 minutes. If I didn't mention that, but the problem with it is, is you're gonna you, the only way you're gonna know what they're saying is if you can speak Dan Danish, uh, and I don't know too many people that speak Danish, but that's the only way you're going to watch it to know what's being said in this without having to do subtitles. Uh, they also have Spanish subtitles as well, so I didn't realize it was not English, but Gambl it has special features. Gambler Nicholas Winding Raffin's Rise to the Pusher Trilogy, 2007 Bl Bollywood Remake Trailers and Selected Clips. But, uh, that's a uh, pusher. So now I have all three, thanks to Larry and Melissa. And then I got Blue Crush Part Two from the filmmakers that brought you Blue Crush. Uh, PG thirteen from Universal Pictures. Clocks in an hour and fifty three minutes with a one by seventy eight by one anamorphic widescreen uh, presentation. Um, 5.1 in uh, English, Spanish, French. I guess those are just the three uh, tracks that come in here for languages. But pretty much the average, you know, speaking tracks, if you will. Uh, obviously, this is a sequel to Blue Crush. Uh, it does have quite a few special features, especially for a DVD, as you can see right there. All in that orange or yellowish orange. Uh, little uh, rectangular block there those are all the special features probably about four or five uh, special features there pretty uh pretty cool considering it's a DVD because usually for some reason DVDs tend to not put out a lot I mean occasionally you'll get a DVD that has a lot of a lot of features uh, but then I picked this up um, it's called uh, DX Vengeance this is a WWE Studios release. Um, I, I picked this up because I used to be a really huge DX fan when they were a faction in the WWE. Um, it has such matches as uh, Rob Van Dam versus Edge for the WWE Championship, uh, Spear Squad versus D-Generation X in a 5-on-2 handicap match, uh, John Cena versus Sabu, Kane versus the Imposter Kane, Ric Flair versus Mick Foley in a two out of three falls. Randy Orton versus Kurt Angle. A triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship. Shelton Benger Benjamin versus Carlito <laughs> versus uh, Johnny Nitro with Molina. And Eugene versus uh, um, Umaga, or, or as uh, Steve, uh, Lord Steven Regal would say, Umanga. <laughs> Includes uh, Victim. Music, uh, video by Epic, recording artist, 18, 18 uh, Visions. And uh, it's a Region 1, 5.1. 
and I'm not sure it feels like it's got several discs in here it definitely it's from I believe it's from yeah it says it's from Canadian home video well that's what the rating is so I'm assuming this is a Canadian uh, release disc from you know across the border but uh it's got to have at least I dare say two to three discs I would say maybe possibly three just because of the heft, but the X there. I was going to give it away, but then I'm like, well, maybe I ought to keep it because it is DX, you know? I don't know. And um, then I got Kaboom uh, Movie 4 Pack, Pac Man, and the Ghostly Adventures. It uh, has. Four mini movies, 16 by 9 widescreen, uh, 88 minutes, 2.0 stereo for English and Spanish, 2.0. Uh, it does have limited special features, which I don't expect too much out of animate. You know, in that animated title, it is from Phase 4 Films as well on Kaboom Entertainment. And they do have the Kaboom Entertainment. And they must have a Facebook and Twitter uh, page for... Uh, the series of movies or little shorts that you can uh, go to as well. Pretty cool. I like the packaging on these. I like the cover art that they do for the Pac-Man's uh, CGI Pac-Man that they have here. But, uh, looks like they went all out for the Pac-Man, uh, or you know, for the Pac-Man show. A lot better than say a lot of other. You know, like, like there's stuff on Nickelodeon that I've watched that's like um, the latest um, reboot of um, chip, um, the Chipmunks. The CGI on that is god awful. I don't know how any kid would want to watch it. It's a very poorly done CGI, and then I look at that, and that makes that look light years better than uh, chip, the Chipmunks. And then I got this movie called Big Man Japan. Truly whacked out the goofy creatures are hilarious and it's a magnet releasing and it's a six shooter film series uh 108 minutes from 2007 comes solely in uh, japanese english with 5.1 and 2.0 but you can watch with subtitles and spanish subtitles it's 185 by one and if i didn't mention it, it has a from magnolia home entertainment and it has a slew of uh, links you can go to uh, magpictures.com, sixshooterfilmseries.com, uh, hyphen big man Japan, uh, and magnetreleasing.com as well. Um, realtalkla.com says it's hilarious. Uh, does have very limited special features. One of the most thoughtful and funny superhero films for adults. Says uh, the New York Press. Does look pretty hysterical now that I, you know, get a look at it a little better. Some of the stuff going on here looks zany. We got this uh, big-eyed creature going on. I don't know what it is, but it looks really wacky, this movie. Yeah, just like... Uh, the front cover says, truly whacked out, and goofy creatures are hilarious. <laughs> That's uh, Big Man Japan. And then I got the Nature Boy. Uh, wrestle wrestling was his blessing and his curse. I believe I showed this before in past videos, but it doesn't hurt to get another one, because you never know. If, you know, I might want to trade somebody for something with it. 77 minutes it's a espn 30 for 30 if i'm not mistaken has a director's statements and the interview extras says uh i gave my entire life to the wrestling business and i paid the price yeah rick's been through a lot he's been through divorce he's nearly died i believe he went into a, like a form of a coma at some point He's been through a lot. Uh, he's a very energetic uh, wrestler from the 80s, you know, generate seven, late 70s, early 80s generation. Uh, he's, you know, 
been through it all and really fiery uh, character in case you don't know who Ric Flair is a lot most people should know who Ric Flair is but very energetic and uh, very unforgettable act uh, not actor but a very unforgettable wrestler and per, per um, personality it's hard to forget from nature boy and that's uh 30 for 30 Pre presented a uh, little bit biography on Ric Flair double feature from Ice Cube and Mike Epps and all about the Benjamins and Chris Tucker and Charlie Sheen and Money Talks both rated R uh, all about the Benjamins is 98 minutes while Money Talks is 95 minutes they're both New Line Cinema uh, both widescreen presented um, but the problem oh not problem but the difference is is one's two two by four by one and one's two thirty five by one so I don't know if I've ever seen two four by one I don't know kind of weird the only difference is that I'm, another small qualm difference that I see is uh the let's see Money Talks comes with the sub subtitles in English, whereas uh, um, All About the Benjamins does not. So that's a deal breaker. Sorry about that, but I don't make these, you know, compilated double features. But uh, not a big whoop. I mean, I, nobody really, unless you're hard, you know, you can't hear, or, you know, you're deaf or whatever, but then then it's be imperative but you know i don't i don't really sometimes think they think of that stuff so much you know i don't know why they don't make all all dvds with subtitles just for that in case something like that happens but uh next up and on to the blu-ray i got a triple feature action volume set or volume one set from uh larry and melissa here Saw 13, The Conspiracy, starring Stephen Dorff and Val Kilmer, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and I'm not sure who this actor is here, but it's Are You, Are you In or Out, Brotherhood. From Phase 4 Films. Uh, holy cow. Uh, 13, The Conspiracy is 180 minutes, which would be three hours. Second movie, John claude Van Damme, is 97 minutes, widescreen presented. And Brotherhood is 78 minutes in widescreen, 16 by 9. The main film, or the top feature here, I don't know if you call it the main film, but usually the first film gets the shine, I guess you will. Uh, it's anamorphic, I guess, widescreen. Doesn't say widescreen, but... Same ratios as the widescreen, so I'm assuming it is anamorphic widescreen. 5.1 Dolby Digital on all three. Well, the third one does have master audio, high definition master audio. Uh, they're all considered action flicks, obviously. But uh, that's 13, Jean Claude Van Damme and Brotherhood. Pretty uh, neat little uh, volume set there. Get all three in house. I have to set the stuff down here to get it out of the way. And then I got Scary Movie 5, uh, unrated, unrated. The Supernatural is coming. Bring protection. I think this is the one that has. Yeah. Oh, what's her name? Ashley Tisdale. Okay. This is when they kind of started to like, reboot the series. And this one starred Ashley Tisdale, um, Simon Rex, Erica Ash, Katrina Bowden, Terry Crews, and Heather Locklear, J.P. Manal, Mac Miller, and Jerry O'Connell, Molly Shannon, Snoop Dogg, Kate Walsh, and Cat Williams. Uh, this one was directed by Malcolm uh, D. Lee through Anchor Band Entertainment and Stars. This one definitely had a different feel. I mean, it was much like the other ones in terms of spoofing stuff, but 
it was it felt very like different like had a different vibe to it like from the previous uh, scary movies to me uh, when I did watch this I mean it was in that same vein as like you know funny bone funny but it just kind of felt like maybe it was watered down a little bit because somebody else took over directing the series I believe because I think the Wayans brothers had a little bit to do with the scary scary movies early on uh, and it was written by David Zucker and Pat Proft as well. Uh, 16 by 9 uh, is 88 minutes running time, and it's from Dimension also. Uh, did have appearances from Charlie Sheen, Lindsay Lohan, if I didn't mention that, and Mike Tyson. So it's had a lot of, you know, familiar faces in Part 5. Would have been nice to see them have a six one, then they could have had a double trilogy, and then they could have just rebooted it or whatever. But I think the spoof kind of played itself out after a while because it felt like every other year or every year we were getting at least one to two spoof movies a year. And I think once that formula was getting to be well, you know, played out a little too much, people were getting sick of it, and they, you know, the box office reflected what you know. People were getting sick of that type of film. And then uh, I got a Blu-ray plus DVD combo pack starring Richard Gere and Topher Top Grace or Topher Grace. The double. Keep your enemies close. A BVS film. Um, it, does, it is a two-disker. Canadian released. 235 by 198 minutes. 5.1 Dolby True HD. The subtitles coming off uh, French and English. It has three bonus features: an audio commentary, interviews, and trailers. Apparently, when a U.S. senator is brutally murdered, a retired CIA operative and Ben Geary, a hotshot FBI agent, are thrown together to catch an elusive assassin code named Cassius. But with time running out and appearances not being what they seem, the two will have to work together to stop the killer. Martin Sheen and Odette Yuss Yussman from uh, Cloverfield co-star in this action-packed, uh, twisted, fill filled uh, thriller. So, familiar fa some familiar faces in this movie. I'm not sure what Top Topper Grace played in, or Topher Grace. Name sounds familiar, but I'm not sure what he played in. But that's uh, the double. And then I got a movie starring a pretty good cast here: Rosemary Duet, Alice and Janney, uh, from Mom, I believe, on CBS. Ron Livingston, S Scoot M McNary. Ellen Page and Josh Pays, Touchy Feely it says it's delightful and a charmer. And USA Today says the cast is superb from top to bottom, and I have to agree with that. Uh, it's rated R, Magnolia Home Entertainment, 2013, 88 minutes. It does have uh, three uh, subtitled tracks on this as well: English, Spanish, and French. Comes in 5.1 sound. So it should be really good sound on this one. Look at the back of it. And then I got this pretty rare uh, blue uh, 3D Blu-ray. A Lion of Judah, The Lamb That Saved the World. It's a Dove approved film. Uh, all new heartwarming animated feature and stunning high def 3D. 87 minutes from Warner Brothers. Special features a Lion of Judah behind the scenes. Um, once again, I believe this is a Canadian release. Uh, I don't mention that because I, I have a problem with it. I just like to let people know that it's not like, you know, here, here uh, necessarily from our country. If that's a problem, because sometimes people like, you know, stuff that, I mean, there's no difference in terms of region or anything, I don't believe, but 
It's just like some people like to, you know, buy buy American, if you will. Uh, and I don't really blame them, but you know, it's just it's just weird, like how we, you know, we get all this imported movies from, you know, overseas, kind of like not overseas, but across the border and stuff. You'd think there'd be a lot of stuff here in the United States that would uh, see, you know, the Dollar Tree just because, you know. They have so many Dollar Trees across the United States. I don't know if they have any in Canada. They might have some in Canada. They might be overstock up in Canada for all I know. Uh, it's from 2010. And it was distributed by Warner Brothers in 2012. But I got a 3D Blu-ray of uh, Lion of Judah 3D. And then I got... Valentino, The Last Emperor, a film by Matt Tanar. Uh, time, time Flawless. I don't know if it's trying to say Time Magazine is saying this movie's flawless. Kind of. Mm. Back, the fonts on this aren't the greatest, I don't think. Kind of, kind of plain, if you will. Phase 4 Films, PG-13. Uh, 5.1 English, Italian, and French language, so no problems there. 96 minutes does have four subtitled tracks, which I'm glad to see, you know, for the hearing impaired. So they can watch this, you know. Uh, it's an inspirational and exclusive look into the extraordinary and lavish times of the iconic fashion designer Valentino. Uh, it's a feature-length film, feature -length film made with great humor and a gimlet eye for detail. Documents the dazzling and dramatic closing act of the last true couture's uh, celebrated career and revisits the amazing tale of his life and work. But at the heart of the film is the unique and endearing relationship between Valentino and his business partner and companion of 50 years, Giancarlo Giametti. And that's Valentino, Last Emperor. And then I got How Far Will One Man Go, starring Josh Duhamel, Josh uh, Wiggins, Lost in the Sun, Momentum Pictures, 96 Minutes, a Florin Shy production, and uh, let's see, it was directed by Trey Nelson. Not really, I I know I should know this actor, but I don't know what I know him from. <laughs> no. um, Josh Wiggins, Emma Furman, and so on. But uh, I guess it's about like robbery and things like that. I don't know if this, he meets up with a little kid that's homeless. I can't remember. Yeah, he's an orphan teenage boy. Becomes an accomplice, I guess. Just hoping nothing happens to the little kid, you know. I hate it when little kids get in a crossfire or something going on that, you know, somebody might not, shouldn't be doing, and then they get killed, and really sad when a kid dies on screen. It does happen, though. <clears throat> and then I got, I picked up this. It's a RoboCop uh, Blu-ray. I liked it for this one cover thing it has, like this little cardboard cutout thing that it has. Uh, I got it for that reason, more or less. I did already have it, but uh, hopefully we see RoboCop 2 or RoboCop 3 in this uh, phase, or wave, if you will. From 1987, 130, uh, 103 minutes, uh, 185 by 1. Basically, this, uh, this is saying that this was remastered on here. So, that's cool. That's uh, RoboCop with the little uh, car cartoonish cover. <laughs> I didn't see that in a lot of the wave around last time. But then here I got back-to-back -back, uh, triple feature volumes of uh, animated goodness here. 
uh, the Missing Links, Donkey X, and Disco Worms. Uh, the main film here and stars Antonio Banderas. Donkey X doesn't really say who stars in it, but then Disco Worms uh, features the uh, voice talents of Jane uh, Jane Lynch. Right there at the bottom, Disco Worms. Phase 4 film. Uh, they're all PG. All 16 by 9. Uh, let's see. The only difference is, is the first one has a slightly different ratio, aspect ratio. Uh, Disco Worms is the shortest. It clocks in at 78 minutes, while the other two are 90 minutes and above. And that's uh, the Family Volume 1 triple feature of uh, this Phase 4 uh, compilated uh, triple feature. And here's Volume 2. Uh, this stars Forrest Whitaker and Dragon Hunters. William Shatner is a true story of Puss in Boots. I did not like this movie. To be fair, I didn't. I thought William Shatner did a really bad job in this for a voiceover. He's trying too hard. Luke and Lucy and the Texas Rangers. This has Billy Ray Cyrus, which I have an interesting backstory on Billy Ray Cyrus. I uh, was going to see a Billy Ray Cyrus concert. Drove all the way down to the state fair. I drove like 85, 90 miles to get there. And I get down there and it says uh, concert canceled. <laughs> and I didn't listen to the radio the entire way down because I, you know, I don't listen to their, that city's uh, particular stations all that much. But there was probably an announcement on the radio and I get all the way down there and he, he no showed. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he had a family illness or. Or what, but kind of was always a little mad at him about that because I was so excited to see Billy Ray Cyrus in concert, and I get all the way down there, and I I ended up going to a baseball game, uh, like a minor league baseball game. So it w wasn't a wasted trip, you know. It was a good deal wasted, but at least I got to get you know some entertainment out of going down there, and that's. The Triple fe Feature of Dragon Hunters, The True Story of Puss in Boots, Luke and Lucy, and the Texas Rangers. Uh, the first two titles are basically the same length, whereas Luke and Lucy and the Texas Rangers is a little longer. Uh, the first two are uh, widescreen presented, and the third uh, here, the Texas Rangers, it's anamorphic widescreen, and there are slightly different ratios on each. Because the first one is 235 by 1, second one 78 by 1, and then uh, Texas Rangers is 185 by 1. Uh, the middle title, The True Story of Puss in Boots, is uh, rated G. And for me, this one is rated G for God Awful. Because <laughs> it was hard to set through for me. I was like, I wanted to put a hot poker in my ears whenever I heard William Shatner doing the voice of Puss. Give me the uh, Antonio Banderas Puss in Boots any day. No no knock on William Shatner. I love William Shatner, but that was one movie that he was, the movie was miscasted or he tried too hard for. My my uh, daughter does not like that movie either, and there's a look at the back. And that's the double feature, or triple feature, I should say. And then I got Whitey from the director of the Paradise Lost trilogy. United States of America versus J. James J. Bolger, a Joe Bar Bur Berlinger film. It's a mag another Magnolia Home Entertainment release, rated R, 2014, approximately 107 minutes, um, 1080p. CNN Films, Radical Media. Uh, it it just may be one of the best true crime documentaries. Basically, it was about the gangster James Whitey Bolger using the courtroom to springboard to examine accusations of multifaceted, uh, can't make up the rest, within our nation's law enforcement legal system. I want to say this might have been maybe the guy that uh, one of my listeners, was, I think it was Mary Wilson. One of my listeners or you know viewers or friends 
however you want to look at it, uh, was telling me about this guy. I'm not sure if this is the guy or not, but I'm gonna say this is the guy that she was talking to me about, saying how how uh, evil he was. I, I can't remember. Uh, I'm sure if she sees this video, she'll comment. Uh, maybe she can refresh what she knows about this guy. Maybe this ain't even the guy, but I'm thinking this is the guy. I picked it up for you know the crime crime drama aspect of it. Kind of like, you know, anything like Unsolved Mysteries would have, you know, did back in the day. And then I got m movie starring Mira Savino, Sean Astin, Alex Panavega, Ted McGinley, Andrea Logan White, Sybil Shepard, and Lee Majors. He's, I got something with Sybil Shepard here and Lee Majors. I didn't even know it. Uh, Do You Believe from Pure Flix Presents. Experience the Power of the Cross. PG-13, it does have a hashtag of, hashtag do you believe movie, um, it is available on Facebook as well, um, special features are very limited, fast paced solid acting and an amazing musical score says so a Christian post, uh, really don't know a lot about this one, I guess it's faith based this one, from what I'm seeing, uh, it requires you know, a pretty hefty cast to carry the movie more or less because there's like seven actors that yeah seven actors that kind of have top billing here so uh, I don't know if this is like really heart heartfelt kind of stuff uh, it's from 2015 from what I'm seeing I'm seeing did I don't know if I said how long it is I don't even see a length to be fair Usually like to see a length on these. Usually the spine, if you can't find it on the back, sometimes on the spine it'll say. Yeah, I'm not seeing a length. You might have to go to IMDB for the exact, oh, okay, it does say it right down here, okay. It was hard to see. It's actually about a two hour movie, so. But quite extensively long, especially for faith-based. But not necessarily, because some of the ones like Exodus and things like that probably are somewhere around two hours. But uh, that's uh, do you believe? And then I got the another Magnolia title, uh, the War Within. Two thumbs up says Ebert and Roper. I don't expect you to understand what I'm about to do. It's rated R from 2005, approximately 93 minutes. Has a mm, very limited special features, I guess. I, it looked like a lot of features at first, but then I looked and it's just like a lot of. Uh, credited uh, uh, features that's just like written out longer to look like there's more. But uh, pretty limited. Got some uh, Independent Spirit Award nominee, uh, Toronto Film, Toronto International Film Festival. I don't know if it's a selection. I can't see. Uh, it's the best screenplay at some film festival that I can't see either because of the sticker. But, uh, got some love from somewhere, and I gotta acknowledge that. Might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's the war within. And then I got this PBS Norman Lear, just another version of you. Uh, this man is a TV legend. He, uh, basically was behind the, uh, basically behind the, uh, Creativity of the shows such as All in the Family, Good Times, The Jeffersons, and Maud, and many more. It says it's from American Masters. Uh, it has special features. What do a 92-year-old Jew in the world of his hip-hop have in common? Mary Hartman Breakdown, Mary Hartman Casting, Not Dead Yet, Bill Moyers on Norman Lear, and The Shrink in, in Syndication. Basically, this is a, a movie about a bold American television in the 70s. Writer producer Norman Lear's name is synonymous with sitcom from his turbulent childhood and early career with his groundbreaking success, and as the shows that I named prior. 
Its social activism, Lear provided the social change that was, and he was responsible uh, or possible through unlikely prism laughter and created some of the greatest moments in television history. And he really did. I mean, like, this guy was like a legend in the sitcom. Like, this, without Norman Lear, my childhood would, would have been really boring. There would have been no, uh, all in the family. There would have been no Maud. There would have been no Good Times. No Jeffersons. I grew, I watched all of those shows back in the day. Uh, I still visit them from time to time when I'm able to. Uh, without him, you know, life of her TV would have been really boring. Uh, it made me spin off and watch such shows like Alice, uh, One Day at a Time. Um, what other shows did I watch religiously back then? That I don't not that he was responsible for, but. It just shows you what kind of good TV there's the Dukes of Hazards, the Incredible Hulk. Uh, I mean, I could go on all day naming different shows. Not that he was necessarily responsible for, but it just shows the creativity that was in the 70s and 80s for TV back then. Uh, very golden era when it came to sitcoms. Like, it seemed like every network had a sitcom that was, you know, very, very much... Uh, hit for the network and they would last like typical shows nowadays last maybe a couple seasons if if they're popular they'll last longer but usually they don't last maybe past a couple seasons but anything with norman lear would be like eight nine seasons and it seemed like it would you know it just seemed like sometimes the show got better as it went on and that's rare uh like to thank him for, you know, making it possible as a kid to, you know, watch stuff with him in it or with his, you know, production skills and, and uh, creativity. Uh, 90 minutes on this uh, disc, 1080i, 5.1 surround, and English subtitles on this one. Very happy to get this. This guy was a comic genius. And he owned the sitcom, and today, he's in my eyes, he's still is is the sitcom uh king when it comes to creating original content for the networks and i just i don't know i'm just so excited that i got that uh, michael kane clements posey uh justin kirk and alexander and, and julian anderson last love it's never too late to love life again This is the, the last one in this video. It's an RLJ Entertainment. 115 minutes, 185 by 1, 5.1 5 5 master audio. Does have a couple of uh, outtakes for special feature, a couple trinkets for special features, but nothing really to write home about. But it's got Michael Caine in it, so that makes it all, you know. Apparently, Clarence Posey played in the. Uh, Deathly Hollows 1 and 2 in Harry Potter. That's what you might know her from. Uh, an engaging cross-generational tale, says uh, Mark Adams from Screen Daily. But that wraps up the video this morning, and that wraps up part two of the Larry and Melissa uh, haul from that box that they sent me. And I'd like to thank everybody for like, sharing, and subscribing. This last video I got, I don't like to do it but every time i say i got so many subscribers i lose one or two but i'm gonna do it anyway and like to thank people for, for subscribing i've gotten like two or three just from one one video which is really good for me uh, it's been a slow go here and there to get subscribers up but i think it's because you know the covid restrictions and stuff uh being lightened up but i like to thank for the new subscribers uh please Feel free to subscribe, uh, watch any of my videos anytime you want. It's no hurry. It's not like, you know, they're hot off the presses and you need to watch them as soon as they come out. Uh, that's the good thing about YouTube. You can watch on your own time. Uh, you can even save to watch it at a different time. You know, you can just click on it and push save for later or whatever. But uh, thank you for uh, subscribing. Thank you for watching. And uh, see you again in the next video, guys. See you later. Bye.